Um, we wrote a, a logging library and, um, and some other forms for configuring the reader. So there's a lot of work that's been done to, to make it really easy to write um, a GUI app. Uh, this is just another picture, but you guys have seen it already. Um, so we need to do three things in the GUI to, to get this sensor data to basically appear on the screen. Um, so every tag that's received gets turned into this my tag object, and that's going to parse out the sensor data. Um, there's a method that's called to, to um, handle each tag that's received, and we would need to make some modifications to that in order to tell it to parse out this new sensor data. And lastly, there's a function that updates the GUI. And we want to tell that to take the current sensor data and put it onto a graph or a text box or something of that sort. So the, the MyTag object has information about, you remember before we, we had an ID for this sensor so that we could identify what type of sensor it was later. And so this is where we'd, we'd add that information, as well as how to decode out the sensor data we put into the ID. Um, this handle tag received method, we're going to need to pull out that sensor data from the my tag and store it somewhere. The reason that we don't update the GUI in this, in this step is that the tags come back from the reader at a high rate, and if we if we're editing the GUI each time, um, it causes it causes our computer to crash basically. Um, and so periodically, there's a, a timer that goes and updates the GUI um, every hundred milliseconds or so, and it puts this sensor data onto the GUI, and that prevents um, really loading down the CPU. Um, so lastly, I'm going to talk about um, some special sampling issues. So if you connect up any ordinary sensor, um, it's going to take a while for the output of the sensor to charge up. And that's kind of the, the blue curve here. And so this is particularly for the accelerometer, but you'll see it with sensors in general that after you turn it on, it takes a while to power up. And um, it's also consuming a lot of power while it's on. And so we'd like to sample it early and not have to wait for it to settle all the way. And because this is just an RC time constant, we can actually predict what the final value will be. But um, there's also noise. And if we scale up the value to the expected value, we also scale up the noise. And so the red and green curves show the sampling noise as well as the as well as the scaled noise. And you'll notice the, the noise is greater at the bottom because the slope is steeper and there's more uncertainty. Um, are there any questions about, about this slide? So hopefully, hopefully I've convinced you that building a compelling demo application is, is pretty easy building on all the work that's been done already. Um, there's libraries for logging and graphing and controlling the reader that are, are fairly simple. And for a minimum working example, see this attenuator test application. Um, it's kind of like the bare bones for, for getting started. Thanks. All right. Um, so the, the, I think it's kind of hard to imagine this without a uh, physical prototype at once. Actually, how many people in the room have a WISP? Oh, okay. So we do actually have a large subset. How many people do not have a WISP? Whoa. <laughs> people with WISPs, you should leave quickly. Um, so how could somebody who doesn't have a WISP um, uh, be part of this, or what, what are they going to be missing if they don't actually have the hardware yet? Well, I encourage them to write a proposal and submit it to the WISP challenge. Um, uh, question. Uh, I'm interested in uh, something that was put up on one of the earlier slides about um, passively acquiring data to be read later. Mm -hmm. uh, is that part of the WISP software system already, or 
Uh, if I wanted, if I am particularly interested in the accelerometer data, I have an application in mind. How would that be done? Um, so there were some students that did an application where um, they were trying to activate a credit card, an RFID-enabled credit card. And the idea was that someone could come along and make a purchase somewhere else by by reading your your purse or your wallet with with a mobile RFID reader and sort of replaying that information to a um, to a store vendor for some sort of RFID scanner um, payment device and the idea was that right 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 and so the idea was that you'd have to shake the device in order to um, to do that and in order to get it to work, they had to sample the accelerometer quite quickly and then send things back in bulk. So I believe there's been some, some code written to do this sort of thing. In terms of a, like a data logger application, um, it's not, it's not available through the wiki for, for this reader. We're not really supporting it, but it, it could definitely be built on top of, on top of these things. If we built the reader, or we built the application, a few wisps, right? So you know we're participating in that. The other big thing is you guys have to get a reader, right? So only you have to have both pieces to work. So there's just another thing to think about with the people in Europe. And uh, in Asia, there's different frequencies. All this stuff has to be figured out. Make sure that the WISP can talk to this thing, or else you're going to have to retune things. There's a lot, little details that need to be negotiated. Um, you should think about that when you start to apply. Okay, there's a question over here. Is waiting? Okay, I understand that uh, there are two ways of like, you know, detecting that whether the it has crossed a particular voltage or not. One was the supervisor way we discussed before and one is that correlation way when we are at any point of time. So I believe that is done in the software over here wherein if it goes beyond a particular level, we say well it has crossed this particular threshold level. So I was just uh, concerned since okay if I go for correlation based approach wherein I actually correlate the data and uh, I just have an 8 bit microcontroller, the MPS 430 8 bit microcontroller. Do I have, and I'm talking uh, in terms of UHF band, so do I have the enough sampling frequency to actually get data, sample that data and correlate it in the software over here? Or I can't do correlation pre with the present microcontroller architecture at present? The, the correlation of, for example, sensor data to some, what, what are you talking about correlating? The correlation is basically I get some data. Okay. Okay, so whatever data I get, I, that, that is analog, I want to sample it to digital domain. So if I am capturing signals in UHF band, okay, let me say, I am, for example, I have a signal of 20 kilohertz and uh, I want to recreate that signal analog demand. So I have to sample it double the frequency, 40 kilohertz. So is that possible over here with the microcontroller and use 8-bit microcontroller only? The, the maximum ADC sampling rate with the microcontroller, I believe it's over 100 kilo samples per second. Um, obviously, there's other constraints in the system. You couldn't transmit that data at that rate, and you probably wouldn't be able to run the microcontroller for too long at that sample rate. 